Hi guys, Troublemaker here, and this is Wargame Red Dragon DLC 3. Uh, so, I don't know that this is going to be a good match or not, so I'm not going to lie to you. Um, this is a match that I scooped up, it's DLC 3. Um, most of the players in here, I would say, are, are um, uh, you know, high average. Uh, some of them are just average. Uh, but bear with me, uh, could go either way. Uh, with totally random names, uh, we have a check name, an Illuminata Spider, Meminatort. They're playing the blue four side, mostly composed of NATO. And on our red four side, we have the uh, Day Clan with Gaunt, Guy Incognito, and Topspin2005. And uh, some of these ranks are decently high, so we should see a pretty even match here. Uh, Guy Incognito and Topspin have done no ranked at all. Uh, this guy's a private, so he is um, not bad, but uh, low rated. Um, so, to open up, we have a lot of tanks and um, anti-air units being deployed. Oh, changed his mind. Is he flipped them to the other side, perhaps? No, he's actually just completely starting from scratch again. Okay, so we're not looking at a, a team here. We're looking at lack of a plan as it's being developed here. Um, Private here has selected this field here. This is one of the roughest fields of all. Um, this town is an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, it's an advantage because if you're... This is all tank battle here. This is all tanks. It's all giant open spaces. So everyone rushes with tanks here. Uh, but with this, you can put a, uh, an anti-tank in between here and just pew, 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 shoot your lasers out, you know. Um, but it's a disadvantage because if the enemy is actually able to push you out and you don't have an infantry in here, and they place an infantry in here, they now control this bridge, and there's absolutely no way of you recapturing this. That's a big problem. Uh, in the middle, uh, once again, you kind of see an imbalance going the other way. We have a giant town here, and a little itty bitty one here. It's not even centered. Uh, so this gives a, an opportunity for Echo to become very easily defensible. But also it means that Lima is very hard to push because you can place anti-tank here, tanks here, all that sort of jazz. You have to go across this larger open area to face off against it. Uh, so Echo is almost impossible to siege. Um, but there's not enough uh, bush here, whereas Lima has a much more wide open area. Uh, once again, still favoring slightly to Echo. It's uh, you know not really balanced. And then on the bottom we'll notice that Bravo is slightly closer to Echo than India is to Lima. In fact, India doesn't even connect to Lima. Uh, but there we go, here we go. Uh, lots of infantry command going out, indicating by the quick flash here. Uh, Day will, in fact, gain one point off this, perhaps? More? More? Why is this moving? Oh, it's a full of this group. Okay. See, I would have just kept that out there. Uh, so we have a, a MiG-23 MLD coming out here. And uh, just going to try and use this to uh, stop any potential bombers. It's not the worst plan in the world, but it is the worst plan in the world if you are, in fact, rallying out helicopter infantry. Because um, helicopter infantry are supposed to cover for that. Now, he's getting pretty darn close to this track rapier. The track rapier is just to stop and fire. He'll probably get a good few shots off, and he will, in fact, escape. Um, looks like he's going to go for invasion, and he's actually got a, a large number of land-based units here. And a lot of them are actually anti-tank infantry, which is... Uh, kind of surprising given that this is a pretty uh, infantry heavy thing. We got a fly going down here by Lumina saying like defense because he has the MiG, or sorry, the Mi 24D sitting here with a Spetsnaz employee. Spetsnaz, of course, are one of the hardest units in the game to kill as far as infantry goes. And Ninja is going to fly forward. He's going to sacrifice this helicopter, gain a little bit of knowledge here. Uh, see what he's looking up at, and it's a lot of anti air units. Now, if I was him and I saw this, I would actually push. Because these anti-tank infantry are going to do much better than this ridiculous number. But actually, he is going to set up a defensive perimeter and try and score some shots. You know, the Mi-24D will move back. Oh, not in time. Ninja takes him out. Here comes the SE-24. Bomber should get shot down here. Should get shot down here. Get shot down there. Uh, the bomb will be good to kill one Reaper. Uh, not enough to make it worthwhile. And so now he's got to position these guys. And uh, this bush here, of course, if you lose this bush here, you lose Echo. That's a big thing. Um, 
And oddly enough, this is a 3v3, none of blue is actually pushing Nima here. They're actually choosing to ignore it for now. In fact, just kind of trying to fake that he's doing this. And oh, I can't believe this is allowed to happen. Luminatus uh, was actually able to get a, uh, a group of six seconds here, bringing those Gurkhas into the woods. And this could be pretty disastrous. Tanks are coming around formation now, trying to pick off any vehicles they can. Uh, BMP 1Ds are not going to be the best defense here. They have napalm rounds, which will be good against the Warrior Milan, but that's about it. So lots of heavy tanks here. And this continues to push, and none of these Conquerors are actually in position, so this is catching him pretty well off guard. The Spetsan Screw, able to take off a vehicle with the help of this BTR-80, and now the Gurukas are moving around into position. And uh, it's a lot of Prizic Iglas here, not a lot of uh, things. He's got to get, he's got to unload these BMP one ds now. Okay, Moto Shrilki is deployed just in time, and they will be able to get some decent shots up on the Milans, but they are all unloaded just in time. Um, it looks like the the Gurkhas might be able to continue pushing in here and, and actually kill an Igla. That would be actually a huge kill. And IL one hundred two is he going to bomb his own units? These things have a very large radius. Oh my god, he bombed his own freaking units. Oh my god, that was embarrassing. Okay. Well, we have more leopards coming up here. Scary amounts here. Uh, K one AI, of course, is the upgraded version of the K one. Uh, going to try and take a lot of this damage, but uh, taking a lot of hits here from these conquerors. Conquerors actually immediately paying themselves off. Uh, will run out of rockets before they will uh, defeat this push, though. And T-55 is a tank, by the way. Will get wiped out. Technically, it's in the vehicle category, but it's very tank-like. And Conqueror's getting one more shot. We'll kill that K-1A1 once again. As this push is good. Now, here's the problem um, in terms of judgment skills. Um, I've talked about this a few times on Reddit, but I, I think that um, it's worth talking about it here. Um, people in Reddit have this kind of philosophy where... Everyone, get, if you want to learn the game well, you get your own lane. So, um, I think I think uh, uh, Day is doing this. I I don't think this other team is doing this. So, um, so for example, this here is one lane of traffic. This here is one lane of traffic, and this here is one lane of traffic. Uh, now, of course, um, that's not what Blue did. Blue actually went for a, a two base push. Uh, I, I tend to say in the south here, yeah, in the south here, so, you know, this, uh, this, and, you know, there's not much of a push up here, it's mostly defensive, you've got the Milans in place, so, like, as I said, that's a huge advantage, and all the while, we, everyone else here kind of went laning, they just went like, oh, this is my lane, this is my lane, now, what happened is this turns into a 2v1, in which none of the teammates are going to help, because everyone's, like, they're thinking, like, you know, well, you know, this lane belongs to Gaunt. So this here is all Gaunt's fault, right? This lane here, this is all Topspin's. Topspin's doing a marvelous job. Two thumbs up, right? Because he hasn't lost his territory. And this lane here, well, this lane here belongs to a uh, guy incognito. And he's not doing a great job. He can do way better, but, you know, uh, still two thumbs up. He's, he stopped the opponent from capturing this hotel base, so... You know, and that's the kind of thinking that, that comes employed with this laning idea. And uh, I just wanted to stop the video right now and say, like, uh, I'm not in favor of laning. I think that's really silly and stupid. I think the best way to go is to develop a strategy as you would if you were just one person playing a 1v1. If you do that, um, you'll have much better success uh, in your games in the future. Uh, there is room for this lane theory in that the roads matter. Because uh, this road here is a crossroad. So this road leads in here, all the way here, down to here. It leads a lot of directions. There's lots of paths you can take here. Um, but I don't think laning as a concept is very good. And oh my god, it actually gets. I, th I didn't even think he was going to hit that. And we have an Mi 28 coming in here. It's got 16 uh, missiles, so it should actually be able to kill every single one of these tanks if it is able to survive. And oh my god, Short Ram will knock him down. Uh, so here comes another MiG 27M, and uh, it's almost it's it's getting kind of difficult to tell who's losing more here um, because there's a lot of tanks here that died, and oh my god, good decision choice here by Topspin decides to push in here, and uh, this is a one point base, this is a two point base, so he's got to push probably one more time to gain an advantage, but with these BMPTs, these T72As, he's gonna be in a good position. Um, 
interesting low cost uh, uh, positioning here for these anti tank guns. Uh, will not be able to stop this though. And uh, top will be in, or not top, sorry. Yes, actually, it's top. Top spin will in fact be able to scare this. And uh, the Kahu, an anti tank weapon, will in fact be just too late for the party. Um, did not quite curve around properly before falling. And uh, another set of conquerors out here. Um, they will run into weapons before they hit their value target. Now, he doesn't want to actually push up here, but looks like he will be risking it. Uh, the reason why he doesn't want to push up here is because he doesn't really know what's in here. And here comes the IL-102 and the MiG-27. We get some great shots here. Uh, looks like zero kills, though. Zero kills. There is no anti-tank weapon on this uh, command infantry, by the by. And there's a lot of freaking planes coming here. Now he's got that SE-25 coming out. And it's going to come around for a second wave. The Track Reaper could actually kill it if he does actually try to go for it. And this is going to be a point where Top will be... Uh, sorry, Day will be bleeding out for the first time. And... Wham bam, thank you, Shazam. Uh, that has now been taken out, and we'll be seeing a plus two bleed here. Uh, opportunity for them to catch up. Now, on the plus side, Day does have Echo and Lima pretty well secured. They do need to wipe out these Milans here, but then they'll be able to put a command in both places. He's well aware of those Milans because they fired on him already. SC25 comes in, picks off another tank, and he's trying to creep on this edge here. Now, here's a kind of a problem. Um, for uh, for the day for top spin here, because is it top spin here? No, it's gone. Sorry, it's gone. Here's the problem for gone. This ledge here is high ground, and it provides a higher stealth value for this Nanayan Shiki. So hypothetically, he probably doesn't even see this. You know, it's just going to fire at him. Um, so it's going to be very very difficult for him to uh, combat this position here. If he can get some of these infantry into this town here, by sheer luck, possibly yes, he could eventually push into here um, but this is going to be a very good position I, I don't think this shallow is quite the choice uh, I think it's more of a nostalgic choice here than a, a real one and um, wow actually we'll take out a tank with that that's shocking um, and now with the surround might be able to do something he's bringing infantry into the town here that's all he really needs to do is delay until he can get these Gurkhas in and he does and if he can get them uh, all the way up here, there's kind of a blind spot. You can't see here, and you can't see here. So if he can move them up, and he's, he's just kind of probing with the Saxons first to just kind of figure out whether it's safe or not. And uh, the, these uh, IL-102s are scary. Here comes a KM-900 trying to use some amphibious tactics to uh, wipe out his opponents. And uh, with uh, only a BDRM-2 here, he could be in trouble. Oh my god, never mind. He's been completely spotted. Uh, he might be able to sneak into this town, but probably not. Uh, looks like he's been picked off pretty effectively. And with the... Yeah, there's just... There's too much here. Way too much here. Lots of rocket fire. And here comes the IL-102. Now, uh, slight advantage in terms of units for, um, for Day. Because they have a lot of air forces that they've kept alive, surprisingly. And they'll be able to bomb their way back into position. Now these are track rapiers, of course they are radar guided systems. And with that said, uh, he, they could use an anti-radar bomber, a seed plane, to wipe them both out very easily. Uh, Shallow's coming in here. Um, I mean, they should be getting wiped out. There should be no reason for them to win this. Because... The range advantage is on the Leopard AS-1+, and, you know, he might just junkyard dog this one down. Uh, Shal is taking practically no damage. He really should be microing this one backwards, though. Uh, still gets the kill, but yeah, uh, superior range on these versus the Shal. It's like I'm almost certain here, 1925 versus, yeah, definitely should have been microing that back. So 300 range advantage. And a Moto Strucky moves in, and Kiyu Marushiki will in fact go down. Uh, so, uh, we're kind of seeing things unfold a little bit here um, in, a, in a more problematic manner for uh, for blue players because it's possible that their push might have run out of steam. Uh, if they can, if Day can push them out of this base here, they have the opportunity to reclaim it and gain a plus one from this base here. 
Now, the Kahu is coming in here. The Kahu has missed all the shots. In fact, Boot getting some seriously good damage here. And, oh my god, it goes down. Now we have the Peace Peasant coming in. Uh, but there's also this MLD to kind of push it away. And the Track Rapier is all sort of just retreating here. Um, that was actually a pretty fair exchange. Both players will lose that each, each uh, plane for about an equal amount of time without losing either. And uh, we're about to see a plus four here. Uh, because he's moving in a command infantry in, and I'm not sure where he's going to go for. Like, one of the goals with placing your infantry, your commands, is, um, you want to put them in places that you're, you wouldn't think about pl putting them. Um, you know, out in the open right here would be the best place, actually, just right here. Just because artillery, random artillery, random bombers, can really make a mess of things. When I'm playing Conquest, I know for sure that if uh, there's not a significant amount of anti-air in the area, like if I was able to see these two planes, I would just carpet bomb the entire area relentlessly. And um, so we're going to see a plus one on one of these points here soon, or it has already happened. Why is it only plus three? Oh well, it's still plus three. Uh, so we're seeing the lead is being taken here by this random team who's, um, you know, probably somebody and not nobody, but uh, they they are, um, you know, playing playing against a, a team that knows who they are. Um, yeah, I I don't know about this tank use. He's just throwing his tanks into these conquerors, and. Um, I mean, supplies are coming, but this really does seem very tactically poor. He should be considering rallying in probably infantry and anti-air to cover possibility of losing this command squad. But having said that, the modal strategies are moving in here from Gaunt. Um, Conquerors are wiping out a lot of units here, and they'll be able to secure this length of forest here, uh, which means that they will be able to... Yeah. Uh, deny access of this road here, which is always a uh, scary concern. And never mind, they just lost most of their infantry. They still have VDVs, and there is a uh, a Skriz het here with some infantry going to try and contest this town here for no better of a reason than um, it could be getting in the way of things. And Fusilier is jumping forward and actually kill off all the VDVs except for the four will die probably pretty shortly. Uh, so a little bit of mismanagement and uh, Topspin's like, well, I probably would not put my command there then. I've decided not to put this there. And uh, Gurkha's fencing off against VDVs here and bomber support, IL-102 and SE-24. Yes, gets both track rapier will fire, but not enough. He needs to get uh, a few more anti-air in here if he wants to pick off planes entirely with his anti-air units. And we have more of these K1s coming in here. Trying to do a bit of jungle skirmishing with uh, these guys. Uh, he needs a recon here because a lot of these vehicles and infantry he can spot pretty easily as long as he can get into that anti air. And BP2 trying to pick off that rapier as an, a an AH IT 1T. I think it's a 1T. We'll be coming in here to add a little bit of support and uh, worth noting it does have Hydra. It does have Vulcan, it does have Sacros, it has all the weapons for all of the units except for anti-air. And it looks like this command will in fact be going into this one point base as they continues to try and contest this one zone, which is uh, currently in possession of this random team of people with Russian names. Um, yeah, it looks like he's going to try and deploy his, his, uh, his facilities. The Conquerors here are in a very, very exceptional position. Um, it, it seems that uh, Illuminatus Fighter just keeps running his units into them. And uh, this is the game plan, of course, this forest here. Um, if he can get, you know, like a tank right here, or even an anti-tank weapon, he would disrupt the entire reinforcement path just here. And that's not an expensive investment. Not at all. Uh, so back to the south, uh, we see our cavalry tank coming in, the BMP 685, but it's going to be gunned down right away by the Chally Mark III, uh, which will be clearing the way for these Fusiliers. Um, 
in this particular instance, going into the jungle won't be bad because there's Sapperies here, and Sapperies do not have any anti-tank weapons. They can't actually even fire on tanks, other than a little bit of Napalm and Dog. Uh, that's a lot of IL-102 damage. Chally has been completely hoodwinked here. Um, BTR-70 can try and do a little bit of damage, but not really enough. And the Sapperies still survive somehow. As the Chally's like, wait a minute, that was just a Sapperie. I can be the Sapperie. And yes, he can. Um, Napalm doesn't quite do what it should against tanks compared to other units. And I shouldn't say should, because it most definitely should not do a lot of damage to tanks. But there is a BMPT coming in here. The BMPT scores have uh, a nice combination of weapons, including an anti-tank weapon, but also an anti-infantry weapon. And uh, with the two of them firing together, they're going to get a lot of um, morale damage. In fact, weapons have jammed on this vehicle. And now it's all just free shots. Uh, in this, the more southern region here, the Heibong, he Beyong are challenging the Motos Durelkis. And uh, now we're going to see a bomb. Hyobyong moving away. Takes a few hits, but gets rid of all the infantry. All the while, the Chali will, in fact, move back uh, to try and get healed up by this uh, stalwart and this CH470, or 47D, sorry, 7D. Uh, um, and more bombs will be going off to get rid of the Sapparates and the BMPTs. But not enough damage was dealt. Uh, in the middle flank here, we can see uh, an attempt at moving some Panzer Grenadiers here forward. And they are getting picked up by the BMPTs, but the BMPTs are also getting picked off here by our Milans. And now it's just not in range, but I think the trade is really good. If I remember the BMPT, yeah, 70, the has 70 Panzer Grenadiers. So it, it's trading... You know, a, a lot of points for a few points, basically. And now the Sapri is finally going to get their meet their maker as a pile of Challenger tanks coming in here, and actually chooses to separate them into four individual microing patterns. There is an advantage and a disadvantage to doing this. The advantage is that you can individually micro them. Now, since they're they're, they're um, you know, cavalry tanks, you're expected to tank a lot of damage. Uh, so this makes a lot of sense. The downside is that. Um, their morale is uh, far more shaky when they're like this. So uh, right now the two of them are panicked. If they were together, they might be uh, orange or yellow, but definitely not, definitely not red. And with that, we have our first borders coming up. I'm just gonna try and smash through the whole area with mortars. And yeah, they've lost their command here on this base. Day is moving in their own command and could potentially just section it off right here in this little corner. And we might see Day begin to bleed them again. Now it's currently 403 to 143. So coming back will be easier said than done. Uh, especially considering um, this this map is currently, or this zone is currently segmented this way across the road. So that means the potential areas for putting a command are pretty limited to this small 25% vector of the sector, it, it will become very, very easy to kill it. Uh, having said that, Panzer Grenadiers lead the way, kind of just sitting out here actually. Um, there is a T72 BU in here, so hypothetically that should just do everything, but at a very high cost, of course. So here we go, Dave finally deciding to move up his, his command and will be placing it directly next to a tank, but oh, spotted instantly! Look at that! Just instantly spotted. Uh, the Gurukas will in fact pick it off, and he's got to be thinking about moving that sooner rather than later, because he sees the Gurkhas. He knows the Gurkhas can see him. And he is in fact going to move it. Hornet will be firing, and we have Abuk rebuking it. Gets the kill, and he will in fact move it out just in time. Oh, he has a second command. He has two commands in play. That's very clever of him. Uh, so now with the command squad here coming in, it will once again isolate this zone. So now we're looking at a plus one advantage still going on. Leopard 1AS is pushing the T-72 BU out. Uh, the BU does have a range. It does have better weapons. It does have a better armor. Uh, but this is just uh, using good old-fashioned micro to try and beat them. Uh, having said that, Leopard 2AS in the corner here, this is not as fair as it once was. Um... Gets the kill. That was a huge kill. Uh, so he's just using these Leopard 185s as a uh, shield. He uses Leopard 285 to get the kill. 
And now they've basically cleared out enough stuff here that they can actually put a command in here as well. Will that happen? Does not seem so. Uh, so SU-24 is going to try and get some pop shots off on some of these vehicles, but no, will not be able to do so. Uh, they've actually cleared out just about all the anti-air here. There is uh, some uh, peeps, some IHOC peep tube over here, and they have all their radar turned off, so they won't be getting picked off. Uh, grouping up your anti-air units is also something that has uh, a moderate amounts of effect in this. Uh, if you're trying to just cover one area, uh, grouping them up seems to be the way to go because it actually increases their accuracy. It's uh, not an intended mechanic, I don't think. But anyway, the commando squad is going to go ahead and move in here as a, a squad of uh, Gurkhas. I, I can't say the tag. Fusiliers, sorry. Fusiliers. We'll wait for the Motos Turelkis. And uh, with the support of that Warrior Milan, doing it very, very quickly as the squad will come in. Uh, now, I think he may be revealing way too much, uh, specifically the location of his command squad right now. And he should probably consider moving in a second one sooner rather than later, because um, you know it, it's only a matter of uh, yeah, there you go, God says attack right here uh, of uh, mortaring it, and mortars are going to be very good against command squads. And these Gurkhas finally paying themselves off in that uh, devilish location, picking up lots of the eagles and doing. Critical damage, but the BMPTs will in fact clear it out, and will the command squad go down? It is stunned, but it's not dead. It may take a few volleys, it seems. That's the lack of corrected shots here. And uh, IHOC Pip losing two of those so far, as uh, looks like Dave might be mounting a bit of a, a comeback here. They have pushed out of Bravo, but at the same time, they've been pushed out of Lima. Now, keep in mind, there's not actually that much here at Lima. Um, the hotel's been kind of a ghost town this whole game. But here comes the Light Vehicle Express. Now, the SU-12254 is specifically that. It is a, a unit that is entirely designed around killing light vehicles. It gets absolutely eradicated by medium and heavy tanks, so... No use there. In fact, can't even fire on these units because of inefficiencies. Uh, they have to get exceptionally close. And might be close up to the K1 is, and we'll get a barrage of shots off. Uh, these things are so cheap that you can lose a lot of these. Actually, it's the BMPT that's probably doing most of the damage here. And might lose the BMPT as well in this little engagement. Nope, unfortunately, even though he's eradicated a lot of these, looks like they will mostly get eradicated. Uh, by the, the medium tank. He can probably try and micro this backwards. The firing computer is down, so it's not as effective. And optical failure, so once again, probably should micro this backwards. There we go. Finally, slightly delayed, but it has been done. And so, yeah, looks like uh, Day has, in fact, been able to push them completely out of Bravo. Uh, I feel like they have a troop advantage right now because so much was positioned in uh, this base here. And we actually have two commands being placed here in this middle base. Um, you know, needs to move up these leopards, obviously, to this flank here. Um, we have a command waiting here as well from Guy Incognito. We could be seeing a push up into a VBL Mr. Rao. Now, he doesn't really know what's there. That's a big problem. He's kind of like uh, just kind of padding, pad shotting areas because he doesn't really know what he's up against. Little does he know, there's actually not that much here. It's three anti-air, sorry, four anti-air, a Leclerc, and a Martyr VTS-1. That is not a, the scariest thing in the world. He could easily push up with those tanks. Um, and he also has a K-52 here, so, I mean, he could gain some pretty significant vision with that. It's got really, really good optics. And it's exceptionally powerful. Very expensive, but that is a different problem altogether. Um... So it looks like we're going to see a general fall back here uh, into position. Day has a really, really steep cliff to climb here. We're looking at a points difference of 300. <coughs> so, in the rare event, we have entered mid-game. 
This is where people are just kind of rallying at their units, preparing for the next offensive. He's moving his leopards up. They're all getting picked up by the conquerors. Oh my god. He's lost all of his units here. It's not good. Uh, he's rallying in another leopard too, with guns turned off, which is to me just a little bit unusual. You get that command tank for a reason. And Martyr BTS-1 is going to get rallied in here as well, but uh, artillery should pick them off pretty easily here. Yes, most of the health points are down. There's one McClark here. There's no reason why they wouldn't capture that hotel zone. Um, he suicides a unit to kind of figure out where things are. He spotted uh, the Mistral, I think, or what, he, what killed him here? I'm having problems indicating what exactly killed him. And uh, now we're seeing the big bomb, the big bad bombers coming out. A Spetsnaz crew is kind of moving in here, and uh, it's really, really important to establish information. And so with the Spetsnaz crew coming in here, uh, he's going to see that there's actually not that much here. Tanks already uh, a vision of the BL Mistral. This is one of the units in the game that's going to have the highest amount of um, uh, of stealth. So if that's all you see here, you can all if the only thing unit you can spot is a recon unit, you can just assume that there's nothing there. Because realistically, this thing has medium stealth. No, very good. This tank here though is poor. Very, very poor. So you're you're not gonna be running into these guys. And he's moved up another mistrial to try and get some some pot shots off on the Spetsnaz Karoo, uh, but probably will not be able to get it. Now there is a Kahu being shown here, which is kind of scary for a tank, but here we go. He's going to move it up, and the Mistral actually has a lot of his weapons turned off here. Um, turning them back on very, very quickly as the tanks push forward. Uh, Leclerc is trying to move into a defensive position, but T-80UM is also here. And gets one shot off. These things die pretty slowly. Oh, T-72B is down. Leclerc, is it going to pull back? Or is it going to stay in play? Looks like he's going to stay in play, and he's taken so much damage already... He can't take much more. The T-80UM is good. And a Paw Tiger getting rallied in here as a a, a, a defensive posturing. And Leclerc was very good at micro here. Uh, he was able to kill off two tanks. Save the Leclerc. And now he's got a man caddy here sitting to repair him up. And immediately he's thinking like, i got to get this one here back to base so I can get more supplies. And God, this base here has been quite a problem here for our uh, random team as they now force to bring in that Chally Mark III to wipe out the Shallow. As, as Topspin was once again able to <coughs> uh, move into this area. Uh, now, before I was talking about the lanes and how the lanes are, you know, a terrible way to learn the game. And they are. I think it's, a, it's far better to learn the, the game in terms of flanks and positioning. And think of team games as just being extended 1v1. Uh... In this particular case, they went for uh, an all-in push that was very, very successful on Bravo. And when they did that, they had no fault plans. Just like, we're going to rush with tanks, and it's going to be awesome. And they did that, and the follow-up plan obviously should have been a lot of infantry, and then work on Lima. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, they actually went, the follow-up plan was like, yes, we're awesome, we win. <laughs> and it didn't happen. Um so the fact that Day is in a better position now, I don't think that's a, a, a affirmative theory that the, the the idea of flanks is a good idea. I, I think it just uh, reiterates the point that you really need team communication. And uh, in this particular case, um, Day was uh, much, much better at communication. And uh, they will say, like, okay, I'm going to push this flank while you know, they're screwing up over there, which they did. Uh, MiG-27 coming in here, by the way. Could get a shot off on the Leopard 2, but it's going for the other Leopard 2. The bigger target gets the kill. Will run off with all the money. And uh, these one, these units here could be suicided for a kill like that. That's how uh, valuable those kills are. And Jaguar A is actually rushing all the way in here, uh, deep into Tunguska territory. And the Tunguska is actually going to rail him down with uh, radar weapons, which is uh, rather embarrassing. And, uh, yeah, we're back to a bit of a standstill here. Um... Oh, because there is a Leopard 2 in Hotel. At the Hotel, Hotel, all it in. Still able to push back these Leclercs with uh, artillery fire, and uh, normally this isn't scary, but he only has two hit points left. And the Crow Tail goes down, so getting some pretty successful shots here. He's going to rally in another command here at Lima, 
and might be able to be in bleeding out again. And Topspin says, not defense. That's not the right one. It should be attack. Now, this is a very, uh, normally a good position. But the problem is there is an ocean here in which you can float a recon around to spot. And this recon here has direct vision of this because the bush doesn't cover the way. It's actually quite out in the open. He might, because this shouldn't die to artillery. Um... Shouldn't, I should say. I don't know if it will, but it should not if he's smart with it. But he's actually using that smirch, so maybe not. Uh, a good stun here will actually kill it. And uh, Yeah, here comes the smirch fire. Uh, so Paw Tiger, also vulnerable. The Clark could also get hit here. There we go. And he's deciding to move it immediately. Good choice. Good choice, Manana Tort. Manana Tort. It's a good name, too. And uh, this is going to give a plus one advantage to uh, today, as moving that kind of sucked. But continuing with the offensive here comes Gaunt, going to push into the middle here. And um, you'd think he'd move up this T-72A to give it a little bit of support, but no, he's decided that this T-72A is going to sit here. What was that noise you were saying? That was my dog vomiting. He's very, very ill. Um, Dying actually, heart failure, but that's besides the point. Um, God, with these infantry actually able to successfully get all the way across the way, can you deploy them right now? Hit the Yuki! Oh my god, one down! And he's able to deploy them right on top of the tank. This is an old school European escalation tactic. Uh, in European escalation, uh, infantry would just you just rush up with you know 20 infantry and just drop them on top of tanks, right next to tanks. And in European escalation, that made so much sense because uh, their their rate of fire was so insanely high on their anti tank weapons, and the pricing was a little wonky. It doesn't make as much sense in this game though because um, they don't one shot T eighties like they used to. They balance off tanks to do a decent amount of damage. But now with the artillery fire here, you might be able to keep this modal stroke in play. Uh, the stun is good. It's just a matter of restarting up that. That old-fashioned heat weapon. And one more shot goes up. I don't think he should be able to kill this, though. There's... The rate of fire on these uh, these heat weapons is very, very low. He gets one more shot, and then he's completely dry. And he will, in fact, get stunned by a shot from the Chally instead. And uh, will be wiped out. And here comes the reinforcements for the area. And uh, I, I have to say that Day has been doing very, very good with their bombers and their planes. And they've been... Pushing back pretty darn effectively. Uh, that's why this is out. It is an anti radar with. Um, also has a suspicious radar guided system, so it's able to actually um, deal damage to anti air units. But he might actually lose this. Um, there is a way, especially these Tunguskas, to micro radar. Basically, when the plane's facing away, you turn on your radar weapon and pepper him with a few shots, and then he comes around again, turn it off, and then when he turns away, turn it on, pepper him with a few shots, and so on and so forth. Uh, so far, a plus two advantage now by day, we're looking at 232 out of 1,000. Uh, is it possible for day to still win? The answer is yes, there's still plenty of time left in this game. Uh, if this was a standard 500 point game, uh, this would be a hell of a lot closer, and unfortunately the VPMs are out in the ocean, getting pelted, one will go down. These are your amphibious mortars, because why not? And a team of, of toes should get picked off by these conquerors, because these conquerors have actually been in really good positions the entire game, and he's just been running these units into them without even really paying attention here. And now, I mean, this is looking really good for Day. In fact, uh, if Day was able to get into this town here, which has no infantry currently, it would be a big problem for them. And it's just a conga line of toes getting picked off by conquerors. This is not what you want to see happening here. Not going to be an efficient use of money at all. And Gearbox hit, but he still survives. That's good enough, I says. And are they fully visible? It appears so. So he's actually just uh, suiciding them completely. That's not good. Well, um... So how does this work out? Two points every three seconds means 40 points a minute. 
they will be fully caught up after eight minutes of play with a plus two advantage. So now when you're looking at it, it's not on on the, these guys here, the blue four players to really hold the lead. It's on our red four players um, to lose what the, what is a lead. They, they're winning right now, hypothetically. When you're looking at the, the amount of resources left in the world here. Uh, by the way, uh, we're seeing a ridiculous amount of barrage happening here. Uh, once again, these are your cavalry tanks here, so um, it, mortars will not be super effective at destroying anything but their morale. And hurt feelings, it's, hurt feelings are very important. Let's not, uh, let's not undermine the value of hurt feelings in the world. Uh, but hurt feelings <coughs> does not make death. No, you need to suicide bomb the shit out of these BMP 685s. And we have a small push happening here of Nodovs and BMP 685s. And with uh, what looks like a rocket barrage that's happened here, they might be able to do a bit of damage. Now, there is the Panzer Grenadier. His on stunning has happened. He's down to 14 hit points. One goes down. Awesome epic explosions, by the way. And uh, no, will not in fact succeed. VDV is three total. That is just not enough. The BMP T is going to come in and try and take care of some of these Panzer Grenadiers, but simply not enough. And as these pushes continue coming, you gotta keep in mind, it doesn't actually matter how horribly cost and effective this attack is at all. If it fails, his opponent has to spend more on defenses on this flank. It also gives him the opportunity to carpet bomb the area constantly and make sure this area is not going to be highly susceptible to commands. So <clears throat> there's only so many places where this command could be. It can't be along this narrow line here because it's been proven that narrow line has total vision. So he'd see that. Um, he's kind of figured it out pretty close. It's in this general vicinity he feels. I think he's probably aiming more towards here. Um, but yeah, uh, if he can continue doing this pressure like this, he can stay in the lead. Uh, having said that, we have a big giant tank push coming down to the south, and this is kind of scary. We actually have huge amounts of smoke happening here, ridiculous amounts of smoke. Conquerors uh, will be blocked off here, and K1s, Pinsers, K1s, Leopard 2s, all kind of charging in here. They might be just trying to uh, recapture this jungle. Uh, there's lots of Conquerors here. Now keep in mind, Conquerors were not that popular in uh, DLC 2, and that's because they were pretty well buggy. Um, Seems like they're mostly fixed. Mostly. Um, but here we go with more high tank play. K1 is going to wipe out both BMP 685s. And they will in fact capture this jungle. Now what are they going to do with this jungle? I don't know. Maybe they'll put a command right here. Maybe. Uh, Leopard 2s just against these SU-1254s. Once again we said before, medium tanks eradicate this unit. But this unit eradicates mediums. And actually the Conqueror is able to pick it off. Just having a really great combination of units. Actually, look at that that, uh, that uh, anti radar, anti airplane as it attempted to kill off a tongue Tunguska. And here comes the Harriers. Now he's going to turn, flip this back on real quick, because that would be, actually be very impressive. And he does. He flips it right back on, gets the Harrier kill, and SC two seventy five is coming and gets the other Harrier kill. <coughs> Blue is losing a lot in this attack, a lot of planes. Planes are very very valuable. Remember, you need those. You need those for. For both defending and offending, for pushing, and for this random team here, they need pushing power. They do not need defending power. They're not in a position where they're winning. They're in a position where they're losing, and they have been successful in cleaning up this blue push here. They will have lots of infantry coming in here. Um, they're also very successful in clearing up completely 100% of Lima, which is also really, really good. K1, A1, with one hit point left being signaled for death. And final K1 should go down. He's actually charging with these Conquerors. That's how badly he wants this kill. Uh, but nine. Nine, 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 nine. He will not get the kill. He'll probably have to wait a little bit to get some forces into this jungle and get that sexy kill. And just the, the ridiculous number of anti-tank weapons that uh, Day has been using here is, uh, is almost offensive. Um... Just holding these positions really well. Saxon deciding to charge in here into the Igla. 
No, it may not a smart choice, but in this case it pays out quite a bit. And will in fact get the kill. K1 just slowly on its deathbed. DMPT coming in for the flanking position. You get some bonus damage from crits on it. There is a Habe Young coming in here, however. So if he can move his K1 behind behind the Habe Young, he should be fine. In fact, he's going to get this command in here. Oh! Just lost it. Sniped is that command. That would have actually slowed down this quite a bit. And I mean for... 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 Uh, this blue 14. I wish they had real names. This this is a Luminalis fighter. I'm not calling you a Luminous not fighter. Or you. I'm not calling you Mamana Tort. I know you're fairly high rated Mamana Tort. I'm not calling you that though. Uh, <coughs> but for this blue 14, they really just need to hold on to this base, neutralize it, and hold on to it. Because um, right now the plus two that we're seeing is coming from uh, the fact that they hold Z space and Z space. And if they can just neutralize two, they can still win this game. IL 102 will come in here and. Wipe out Leopard C2 Mexus, maybe? Uh, nope, just the infantry will go down. Mexus will survive the fight another day, but not without support. So we're back to that old line of attack here, to the point where we know that the command has to be in this 125th quadrant, or sorry, not 125th, one quarter, this 25% quadrant. And Smoke comes in, he's going to try and jump into one of these towns, it looks like. But there is a Sapri here, so his plans may have already been foiled before he even lays them out. Exactly, we have an MI-24A coming in here. It's got, it's an infantry transport, so it's obviously going to have less armaments. But that should shut down this Mexus, or this Mexus, <coughs> in the least. It's also got some rocket pods, so it's going to be able to shut down infantry pretty easily. And Mexus gets weapons jammed and is dead. Uh, that infantry helicopter does in fact go down though, and the Spetsnaz does take some damage. Sapri's charging back in the woods. Are you all coming forward to resupply all the, uh, no doubt, Conqueror's weapons? Did he turn off other, anything other than ammunitions? No, he actually has everything on right now. That's actually kind of surprising. And uh, this is where the, they stand. They have to actually rush in with these commands to uh, neutralize this point. They're spending 200 points to slow down the approach. Uh, looks like we're down to a plus one. Oh, looks like a, a, a honey boo-boo here. The Hun Boo Han has in fact uh, taken one of these bases, which will slow down even further. And here comes a big, big old napalm bomb. Uh, gonna go ahead and uh, do a lot of area of damage. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna get the entry path here as well. So any vehicles that are coming in will take a lot of damage. And this actually gives them plus one. That's actually a rather shocking move. And another F1 coming in here to drop another set of napalm bombs. Hello. Nope, sorry, that was an iron bomb. And um, this command is dead, actually. He actually kills command. So uh, we're back down to slight advantage per day. Uh, the pressure is still on our, our blue 14 now. Uh, they need to capture a base in a big, big way. Of uh, 15 minutes. The Lima base, what will that do for them? One point every three seconds means 20 points a minute. If they hold on to that for two minutes, they're in a winningest position. Or a tie, I guess. This is technically a tie. Uh, Leclerc's and Leopard 2A4 is going to move in here with the Leopard 2 tank. Um, once again, I don't know why he hasn't turned on the weapon. Uh, that's one of the advantages to this tank and... In this particular instance, I mean, it's very big, it's very open, it's very aware. Here comes the IL-102s for good measure. Crotel is going to fire doubly good. Does he get one kill? Oh my god, he still survives. The tank will also survive the blast. And Crotel is trying to inch in a little bit closer here as um, there needs to do a lot more. MiG-29 going to move in and drop the bomb. It is right-clicked, it looks like, on this vehicle, so it will be following this fire. And might be a mess as the leopard does go along the beach and you know there's not a lot of beaches in this game but this one is most definitely a beach ain't life a beach uh, so both these heavy tanks have actually taken way too much damage i'm uh, gonna pull back uh, it's all spets not screws here there's actually only a bv here to defend with so um 
Yeah, looks like he was just trying to juke a bomb, actually. He might even want to pull up his Leopard 2 here into a supporting position. It, yes, that's exactly what Mama Laforte is going to do. And we'll wipe it one Spetsnaz crew. <laughs> it's like, he's going to get the other one. That's the big question. And the MI-8T is not the most scary thing in the world. Um, it has rocket pods, which will stun, which will do morale damage, which is all good. Um, but it will not actually uh, do excess meth damage. To bring in the tiger here, this is uh, the position they brought into. They're actually currently a plus two somehow. How is that happening? Oh, they actually neutralized Bravo again using that leopard. This should be very, very short though. And let's see if they can pass by that line. They're choosing not to pass the line. Instead, they're going to hold their command here and let it take some shots. Now, here's where the actual money is being made. The plus two base right here. Uh, Leopard 2 is getting scarily close to these these uh, Moto Strelkies. And as always, it takes a hit. It gives a hit. It will be firing back on the Moto Strelkies. Good choice to turn those weapons on. And uh, actually might annihilate these Moto Strelkies, which is actually terrifying. It's a freaking command. Oh, never mind. The BMP2 is able to get the kill. And now we're seeing a plus one by our uh, day team once again as they begin bleeding their opponents dry, their blue four opponents. And the uh, Pana Tiger sitting in a, a position to kind of snipe, but he actually has no rockets right now, so he actually can't do what he's threatening. Oh, I see. He's trying to chase down for his stingers. So that's what he's trying to do. There's a boot moving up here. Uh, going to try and pick off that uh, tiger. And lift off. He gets the kill. Uh, T-72B will, in fact, be firing in the Leopard 2. We have Jaguars coming in here trying to get some damage. Super Intenders, clear the way. That is scary. Um, yeah, I, it's kind of the position where they can... I think they're in a position now to force a tie. I don't think they're in a position to win anymore. I think winning is way out of the picture. Uh, I think Day's in a position to still win. I think they can still win. Um, they need to basically just, you know... Put a command in Lima or put a command on Hotel and they can win. And gonna get that plus one right now. Uh, so, like I said, you know, it's 20 second, 20 points a minute. Um, they'll probably need two minutes to get beyond that tie area. And in fact, we're gonna see Illuminatus Fighter try and put a command here on this base. Um, immediately, we see lots of uh, units being rallied here as there's kind of realizations like, we don't even have units there, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's kind of scary. Uh, Tornado patrolling the sky is trying to take out any enemy vehicles. And this continued approach here of tank rushes is getting scary. Uh, it's all very much falling apart here. As they're able to kill up a supply vehicle, these Nanayan Shikijis. And uh, uh, Giallo is going to come in here. And uh, yes, they will in fact get picked off. He separates them. Um, I, I only ever agree with separating them if you intend to micro them independently. I don't think micro, uh, separating them does anything real. And with this amount of mortar here, they're taking so much panic damage that they're just going to get raped. Uh, morale does in fact affect how you perform in battle. And in this case, the Nanayan Shiki is successful in one-shotting both. Uh, we have a MiG-28 in here, and this is not the unit that our Blue 4 players want to see. This will be able to stomp in all these tanks very easily because there's basically no anti-air. In fact, there is zero anti-air here. All the crotals are dead. Nope, sir, mine. They're right here. They're right here. But they're moving up. Um, he has pushed back all the tanks. And now he can pull back this helicopter and let his tanks take position. But here comes the crotal. It gets three shots off. One kill. Low on fuel, however. And T-72B could get a kill. Miss. Heavy tanks are charging. Cinematic view. Heavy tanks are charging. Charging. Heavy tanks are charging. The enemy line. Looks like they were successful, actually. Killing that tank off and continuing to push forward. Um, there's a T-64 BV here. Two tanks, two tanks versus one tank. In, in those kind of situations, the odds are always in favor of the two tanks. Um, it takes a lot of misses to uh, make that worthwhile. Uh, T eighty U coming in here, but uh, speaking of the devil, here comes the uh, pretty well the reason why Days even stood into this. Their superior air force, and they will be dropping that iron bomb on these tanks to try and pad them up. They did lose that tank here, as I said, two v one. The two always lose. 
Uh, one tank goes down to the Spitznats Guru, and T-72A is forced to retreat completely dead. Dead. He's dead. Um, so yeah, I'm not able to get anywhere, despite there being nothing here. Uh, the OH-6 is moving in. Does he get the vision he needs? He does not. But he still saw it somehow. So he's going to go in for an artillery approach on the BMP-16. Uh, so now we're... Day is in a definitive lead right now. They have a 70 point win. IL-102 is going to go ahead and drop that standard off location. It's always the same place. There's never been any change here in strategy or tactics. And he's gone for the same kill every single time. So with that command killed, again, we're seeing a plus two one more time per day. As more and more tanks have been rallied in here. <coughs> F1 bombers dropping those sal bombs. Uh, that's your iron bombs. That is the ones that will destroy your tanks with relative ease. And use them all in the BMP 1K. SU 275 coming in here. This is what we're talking about. The Superior Air Force wipes out the Kahu. Illuminata Spider has, in fact, surrendered already. We should see seeing the rest of his teammates leaving sooner rather than later. Uh, him leaving does, in fact, gain a little bit of extra supply of critical unit tower for his other opponents. So maybe they'll think about sitting around and trying to uh, wipe it out. Uh, Yes, wait, not whip. Uh, a Chugatu cargo coming in here with a command infantry. Going to go ahead and drop another one of those um, uh, honey boo boo units, the Han Bu Hans. And T80 UM is firing on something. What's he firing on here? Ah, the FB 432, which is a miss. <coughs> now the T80 UM is completely out of his Sal missiles, so. You'll be relying on his cannons from now on. And the Chugato will move in. Probably, no, probably not spotted actually. And unloading it in the same stereotypical place over and over and over and over, which they will be bombing relatively soon. In fact, a large tank blew up happening in the southern base. Um. Maybe he won't suspect this. Now he still has to drop this, of course, and he's not, so that's kind of a problem. And here comes the MiG-29M. I'm going to drop a bomb on this whole totality of units here, as they will be easily wiped out. So the command goes down, and yeah, they knew it right off the bat. It wasn't even a question. It's just, here it is, gone. Here it is, he says. Um, and we're going to see, actually, going to be mortars going to be wiping it out. And it's a very, very close range of mortars. I mean, there's no reason for this Kyu Marushiki to not be able to move up and micro effectively to get quick shots off at it <coughs> there is a ridiculous line of conquerors but you can actually micro against rockets and here comes the bombs wow that is a really really resilient honey boo boo this is why that woman will never lose any maternal rights to her child despite dating a child molester and having a child in the house True fact, a uh, majority of child molesters, when they come into prison, they always um, try to, uh, uh, not always, but uh, they have a high rate of being attracted to women with children once they are quote-unquote cured, because there is no cure. Uh, so the double iron bomb is good, T-72B comes in here, and going to get some great shots. Kiyomaroshiki and him are going to be about even in terms of like who can killing us the most here. And the MI-24, A going to fly overhead with a sal, so that might just end the debate completely. He should be able to get a spot here in time. No. Nine, I say. Now we have a call for defense up here. Oh, this is a what? It's a confusion. That's what that is. Um, might be saying where to move the command to. Yes, that's in fact what they're doing. They're communicating on their, on their team speaks, their VoIPs. To try and find a more uh, less obvious spot because if, if you lose your commands multiple times and they're always in the exact same location well eventually someone's going to figure something out se275 trying to bum rush a ninja that was a bad play uh but five minutes left in the game it it really doesn't matter with 100 points to gain um you know they would have to be plus four plus four to tie uh, and like i said uh, i'm I very much consider that it's blue can tie. I don't think they can win. I, if I thought they could win, I'd be a little more excited about the victory chances here. Uh, but it looks like we're going to see a pretty 
clear cut victory here, victory lap here by day as uh, the clock does time down. And uh, hey, here comes an air rush, and it's not even particularly well organized, it's just a, a conga line of air units. Um, but there's actually not that much as far as anti air here. There's a Tunguska. Tunguskas do ridiculous amounts of damage and do, in fact, carry the day. And able to get decently in here, but at the end of the day, nope, not even able to find the command. Uh, so congratulations to Day on this DLC 3 victory. And as you can see, the, the two teams are actually very, very, very close in points. In fact, our, uh, our Blue 4 team almost as high as a Red 4 winning team. And uh, yeah, that's my game for the week. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trollmaker. I'll see you guys next week on Sunday with another cast of Wargame Red Dragon.